Hi friends, and welcome to the Pouring with the Fellas collab special. First off, I'd love to give a shout out to Garrick Brown from Garrick Brown Art Studios for arranging and organizing all of this and bringing it to you. And also from the beautiful piece of art we've just seen in the video before me. I'd also love to give a shout out to Jack from JHA Art Studios and his video is gonna be following mine. So I'm gonna run through some colors with you and we're gonna to get to painting. The first color we're gonna use is this one. It's Supernova by this little piggy. Beautiful light pink color that has a very subtle and beautiful blue flash to it. That's going down first. And then next on top of that, it's going to be blue eyes. Blue eyes, here you go. It's a lovely, lovely light blue color and almost has an interference quality where it will flash a greater blue in the light. And we're keeping it simple, just three pigments and a tube paint. The last pigment we're going to put down is this one. There we go. And this one is Simplicity. No, sorry, Sequins, there we go. Sequins is a interference uh, violet color and it's gonna be very, very pretty in the swipe. So you can put sun activator directly on top of pigments, you know, it will work, but if you put down a little thin drizzle of an opaque paint first for the cell activator to have something to sit on, it tends to work a little bit better. So next on top of those pigments, I'm gonna put just a little drizzle of this down, which is the uh, Amsterdam Standard Acrylics Titanium White. Just mixed it up in my pouring medium as I would do with my pigments or any other color. So just a thin drizzle of that over the top before we then swipe with the, this color here and it's Amsterdam Prussian Blue. Okay, that's enough of me chit-chatting. I'm gonna zip it and we're gonna get the camera pointing down and we're gonna get on with painting, okay? Okay then, my friends. The first thing that I should say is that this is an 8 inch wooden cradle and for those people that don't know a wooden cradle is just like a regular canvas but rather than having the canvas stretched over a wooden frame a cradle just has a piece of plywood. It just adds a little more support for the weight of paint that we're putting on. Okay, I also kept it small on an 8 inch canvas because this is an instructional video and I felt it would be a little easier for you to learn this technique and this style if we kept it small. So the first color we just put down there was TLP and that was the Supernova. It's a beautiful pink with an interference blue flash to it. It's absolutely beautiful. And the next color we're putting down right here is the TLP Blue Eyes. Beautiful light blue color. And uh, to me, I see an almost interference quality to it where it will flash a nice deeper blue on top of the regular blue that you can see now. So my paints are a little thick, this one. I could have uh, loosened them up with a few drops of varnish mixed with water, but I decided to see how they would perform being this thick. And as we know, my friends, consistency is key, but you can get things to work when they're on the slighter, thicker side. And here we go with the beautiful, this is the TLP, uh, not simplicity, it's sequins, there we go. I always get the two mixed up. It's a beautiful interference, uh, kind of violet kind of color. And as you can see, it appears white in your actual pore, but when we get the light shifting on it, as you saw in the little video at the beginning, you get this gorgeous, gorgeous, violets kind of mauve flash to it it's very pretty indeed and we're just adding these few little extra lines on the outside of the area we're going to swipe and we will see what we're going to use these for after we've actually swiped it this is a, a style i like to believe that i created i've not seen anybody else adding extra lines of paint for modification but it can make for some really pretty shapes and give some great composition to your pour and your swipe. Okay, now as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to put just a little bit of the Amsterdam Titanium White, just the regular color mixed up in my pouring medium. And we're putting this down just so the CA, the cell activator, has something to sit on because if we put a cell activator straight on pigments, it sinks very quickly. And some of the 
Cells can either disappear or they can warp. Right now, I'd just love to give a big shout out to uh, my group on Facebook, Acrylic Pouring for Beginners. I'd love to give a shout out to my fellow friends, G, Darren, Christy, and Bridget, and all of our lovely, lovely passengers on the Acrylic Crazy Train. So I'm just loading up my swiping tool with some CA right now. And we're gonna be using Prussian Blue Cell Activator. And in we go for the swipe. Well, okay, they're not looking too bad. We can see the cells popping up there rather beautifully but we kind of lost the cell activator halfway through. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more, just gently to the middle of the swipe there and down. So we get a little more interest. Excellent. And now let's just sit here and watch those beautiful cells appear before our eyes. I've said this many times in my videos and I could sit and watch cells develop forever. It's a very mesmerizing, calming and relaxing thing to watch. And again, this is why I do this kind of art. So I'm just deciding there whether to add a little bit of gold CA to this swipe. And I change my mind and let's keep it nice and simple. Remember those Easy rules we were taught in school. Keep it simple, silly. So I believe now I'm going to do some modifications to the swipe and you're going to see why we added those extra lines of color to the either side of the swipe. I use a toothpick to do my modifications, but I know many people use different things, chopsticks, <laughs> anything can be used really. So, in we go. Ah, no, we're not going in for the modification right now. Apologies, I forgot. I do like to occasionally just blow out my cell activator and the colors just a little bit. I do enjoy it where, as you can see right there, you kind of grab one of the cells with a very soft blow. And if you angle the blow right, you can make those cells just a little bit bigger and we can add a little more interest and depth dimension to our piece. So here we go, now for the modifications. So, I love to do my modifications like this, as you can see. It's just a nice, slow, cursive movement to the hand, as if we're doing cursive handwriting or something like that. And I like creating these nice fan patterns with my toothpick. So in we go here for the other side. And as you can see, I'm really just doing circles through the lines and then back out, following the lines of the actual swipe, giving it a little more movement, a little more dimension. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the swipe there at the bottom and just link it up with a few swirls and then link it up with a nice fan there. So just a couple more modifications, just linking up the bits of the swipe making the flow nice and pretty. And remember guys, each time we do the modification, we've got to wipe our little toothpick or whatever it is we're actually doing with the modification because you don't want to drag unnecessary white paint through your colors. So again, this is a little trick guys. If you take the excess paint from the edge of the cradle and you just wet the edges it really does help the surface tension of the paint meet the edge of the cradle and then flow down the nicely over the edges and hopefully retaining some cells and some structure and some interest over the edge of the actual canvas or cradle. So there we go, we've wet all of our edges. Just making sure they're nice and wet properly and we're gonna go in for the first spin. But 
would also love to give a shout out to Garrick Brown, again, uh, the great guy that organized this whole Pouring With The Fellas collab. Thank you very much, Garrick. It was really fun and interesting, and it was actually great to connect with all the other guys that are into acrylic pouring. So we're just checking the movement here, guys, making sure it's all moving as one, and the con and the composition, my <laughs> apologies, and the composition is how we want to actually see it. Oh, just found a couple of little bubbles that we're getting rid of there. And in we go for the first spin. Now, I've said this and I've started adopted doing, adopting doing this in my videos, is leaving the spin in real time, guys, so you can really see how long and more importantly, how fast I spin for. I work in my kitchen, so I've got to be uh, fairly clean and I can't spin too fast and have paint flying anywhere. So this is why I have the 20 inch board on the top of my spinner. And as long as you don't spin too fast, that board will co collect all the drips and excess paint whilst you spin. The beautiful close up after the first spin, looking great, but we are gonna have to give it the anti-clockwise spin. And again, in real time, so you can see how fast and how long I spin. I do let my pieces spin a little bit longer than most people, because as I've mentioned, I do love it when you get the cells over the edge of the cradle. Wow, wow. Well, those paints are really singing together so beautifully. Again, just checking for the movement, making sure it's, making sure it's nicely in the middle and composition. And here we go for the close up, my friends. Wow. Just look at those piggies there, singing together. There. Sim sequins and um, obviously sequins and the blue eyes, supernova, working so beautifully. So next we have Jack from JHA Art Studios. Thank you so much, my friends, for joining me. Thank you again for Garrick Brown for organizing this. And as always, my friends, happy pouring. <laughs>